In this video, I'll show you how to synchronize your measurements on two different Ethernet chassis. To do this, I've got my two different Ethernet chassis here. Uh, my first is the 9185, and I've got that connected directly to my laptop. Uh, and then with the second port, I'm daisy chaining that to this 9189 8-slot CDAC chassis. Um, and what I've done is I've got a waveform generator off screen, and I've actually split out its sine wave uh, output one going to my 92.15 analog input module, and then the other side going to my 92.20 analog input module. Um, and so this is how I'm gonna actually show that everything is synchronized and, and synchronize this measurement across these two chassis. Um, so before I jump into the software for this, I just wanna show you how you usually get started if you were uh, setting up these types of ethernet chassis. The first place you'd go is this hardware configuration utility. Uh, you can see within the hardware configuration utility that it's already populated my 9185 and my 9189 chassis and all the different modules. If they weren't showing up somewhere, sometimes that happens if it's connected to the network instead of directly connected. You just click on your PC and then plus, and then it will add it. Uh, you can add it um, from the network by its address or by its name. Um, it makes it really easy. So then generally to get started, <coughs> generally to get started with... Um, building out something like this or synchronizing this chassis, I'd recommend using an example. So if you go to LabVIEW and you go to help, you can actually go to find examples. And then for DAC MX examples, you're gonna to go to hardware input output, then you're gonna click DAC MX. And then we have a wide range of different examples from analog input, which is gonna be all of your sensor inputs and things, to analog output, counters, digital, um, but for synchronization, you're going to want to come to the synchronization folder where we have a really good uh, example that shows you how to, sy to synchronize a voltage signal and a temperature signal within the same task. Really easy to switch that into any two uh, measurement types that you want. So I highly recommend starting there to see the full code and how to do that. Um, so basically, that's, that's where you go to get started. Now, what I want to do is actually prove to you that these Ethernet chassis are synchronized because... With TSN, we can actually synchronize these chassis within one microsecond of each other. Um, but I want to actually prove that. So I have this um, LabVIEW code up here. And what I have is I have one DAC assistant where I've set up both of um, these analog inputs. So I've got both analog inputs for both these different modules set up in this DAC, in this DAC assistant. Um, and then what I'm going to do, and then I also have this sub VI that R&D set up for me that basically what it does is it compares the two measurement, uh, the two incoming signals, and then it looks at the phase difference and then delay between the signals. So that's how we're gonna actually prove that it's synchronized. So I come here and I'm going to run it. And then you can see the sine wave that I'm getting, which is zero to uh, five or five, negative five to five volt sine wave. And you can see the delay. So. That's uh, in the hundreds of nanoseconds, which is sub microseconds and a very, very small uh, phase difference as well. So you can see that that is really tightly synchronized. Um, let me show you really quickly now an example where we didn't put them in the same uh, DAC assistant. Uh, we have them in two different tasks. So let me go to this one. So again, in this version, we have two different DAC assistants, so they're not within the same task, uh, but it's, everything else is exactly the same. And if I run this one, this will kind of show us the benefit of putting them in the same task and, and using that TSN. You can see that without putting them in the same task, we are in the hundreds of microseconds uh, delay, and that's changing constantly. So they're basically just not uh, on the same clock at all. They're using the individual clocks for each of these chassis rather than using TSN to synchronize them. Um, so basically what I'm showing with this is that just by putting the, um, just by putting the two different measurements within the same task, DACMX is doing all the work on the back end to synchronize those two uh, signals and uh, basically does all of that for you just by putting it within the same task. And I'm gonna quickly set up this, this DAC assistant just so you can see how easy it was for me to set up. But basically on the block diagram, I just click control space. I can just type in DAC, DAC assistant will pop up. 
I place that down. It's going to take a second to, to set that up. Um, DAC Assistant is a really great tool for just like taking quick measurements because you can just set it down and it's kind of a configuration based approach to taking your measurements. I can just come click that I want to acquire signals, that it's an analog signal. Like if I had sensors, it would help me set that up. But right now it's just voltage. And what I'm going to do is I know that I've got my analog input uh, zero on my uh, 9215. So I'm going to select that and then I'm going to go to my 9220. And I'm going to hold control and select the analog input zero on that one as well. And then I'm going to click, click finish. It pops up this kind of like test pane for me um, where I'm going to tell it that I want to do, I'm going to say 500 samples to read. And I'm going to bump this up to 100 kill samples per second, which is the maximum input for these modules. And then I'm going to go ahead and click run. This is basically just testing to make sure that I've actually set things up properly which you can see, I see that nice sine wave, so it means everything's right. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and click OK. It's going to take a second just to build all of that out behind the scenes. Uh, and then I'm going to swap that out with the previous DAC assistant that I have here. So I just delete that, hit Control b to get rid of all those broken wires. I'm just going to go ahead and rewire everything into place. And then I'm just going to go back to the front pa panel and run it. And then once it starts running, you'll see, again, it's within one microseconds, hundreds of nanoseconds uh, of uh, delay under a microsecond is what. So if we were to start saving this data together, we'd be able to say that the, the one of these points is within uh, is taken within a microsecond of each other. So that's really important when you need those, those really tightly synchronized applications. Um, so I'll say that the other great way to do this is we have FlexLogger, and FlexLogger is a configuration-based data logging uh, software. Um, it is really, really great for, for taking those quick, simple measurements. You don't need to do any different coding. Uh, FlexLogger is completely free to use, but uh, for, for synchronizing multiple chassis, that is part of the FlexLogger full, so that's a, a paid feature. Um, but once you set up both these measurements in FlexLogger, it does the same thing. It automatically synchronizes everything together. So when you're logging several different measurement types to file, you know that all the different measurements are being synchronized extremely tightly together. But yeah, now you know how to synchronize your CDAC chassis.